Hey, it's John Henderson with the Conservative Book Society here with a review of The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. My wife and I give this book to every person we know getting married. I'm going to tell you why we do that, why we find this book so value, valuable, and give you four takeaways, four things that you need to know today to start improving your marriage, Conservative Book Society, recommending good books, and spreading conservative ideas. Let's get to it. The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller is an excellent book, but let's start with the basic facts. The Heritage Foundation and lots of other organizations have studied marriage for many, many years. One of the things that they have found is that married people are physically healthier, emotionally healthier, and more stable, make more money, engage in more intimacy, that they are better for communities, and that raising children in a two-parent mom and dad household is excellent for children. Children who are raised in those environments have higher test scores, and reading levels, and perform better academically, and they are also less likely to act out. One of the numbers that speaks out in my mind is that 85 percent in, of inmates have the one thing in common and that one thing is that they were raised in single parent households and so it is clear that families are good for the individual but they are also good for our society as a whole but when we look at that the root of every family is marriage and that's what tim keller gets at here let's break this review down into a few segments first of all Tim Keller bases his, this book is based on uh, a section in Ephesians, and we're not going to get into the biblical aspects today. I'm not a theologian. That would take an entire sermon of a different course. But I'm going to tell you the things that Tim Keller thinks that young people, before they get married, what they need to know about marriage so that they can prepare themselves. And then I'm going to give you four takeaways if you are married, things that you can be thinking about mindsets that you need to have in order to help improve your marriage today. So Tim Keller opened a church or began a church in New York City and found he was around a, a ton of young professionals at the time. I believe it was 1989 when he started Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City. Young professionals all over the place and so this is the crowd he catered to and part of that is helping mentor young people on how the to prepare themselves for marriage. But he and many other people recognize that while lots of people say that there's a 50% divorce rate, that's a little bit misleading because so many people, uh, people who get divorced are more likely to get divorced again. So there are a lot of people out there who've been divorced two or three different times. And then other people make other mistakes. But here are the, the facts, is that if you are reasonably well-educated, let's say college educated, and you don't marry until at least your mid-20s, and you come from a stable household, meaning a, uh, a, you've witnessed a good marriage in your life, you're not from um, a traumatic background, and then you also have religion in your life. If you go to church on a regular basis, or if you're Jewish, you go to synagogue, on a, but you participate actively in your religious life, then you stand a very high chance of success in marriage. Yeah, it's not always gonna be easy, but you're most likely not gonna get divorced. The other things Tim Keller thinks that young people prior to marriage need to know is that cohabitation is bad for your long-term prospects. Whether right? you marry that person or not, it's a bad habit and develops bad habits that can be harmful to your marriage. He thinks that all young people should be preparing themselves in their early teens for who they're going to marry when they grow up as well. Prepare yourself now for your husband or for your wife when you grow older. And two additional points is you are not looking for a soulmate. There's no soulmate out there. If you are looking for a soulmate, then you are looking for the wrong thing. That idea of a soulmate is going to lead you down a path that you will never be able to find anything close to what you need to be a healthy person. And the last point that Tim Keller makes about this is that, for young people, is that 
you are not looking for somebody who's not going to change you. You know, you hear that a lot. He writes about it in his book, A Good Bed, that somebody says, oh, I want to be with somebody who's not going to change me. Well, that's not what marriage is. Marriage is fundamentally about changing every aspect of your life. It is about leaving your mother and father behind and cleaving to your husband or to your wife. It is about leaving your pass behind. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. You need to be looking not for someone who's not going to change me or she lets me do everything I want to do. That's called selfishness and that you can just live by yourself your whole life. You don't need to be married in order to continue doing that. But if you want to be married and you want to be a good husband or you want to be a good wife, then you need to have the, a mindset going in that I am fundamentally going to change and I'm going to stop doing a lot of the things that I've done in the past and I'm going to start anew, fresh, with my spouse, living a new life. And on that point, you don't ever know when you're getting married who you're actually marrying. You know, you know the person who showed up for the job interview, but you don't really know the person that you're marrying for many years into it and that is also going to change. And four things Tim Keller leaves us for. If you were married, here are four things that you need to know your mindset. Number one is when you got married, you should have shed your old self and started anew with your wife. If you have not done that, if you are still living with a single person's mindset, you need to shed that, those bad habits, that selfishness, and you need to start anew, fresh, and cleave to your spouse starting today. Number two, you never marry the right person. So this idea that there's a soulmate out there and maybe you didn't marry your soulmate, kick that nonsense out of there. You're never marrying the right person. Nobody is perfect out there and it is not your spouse's job to make you happy all the time and to, uh, you know, to make it so that you, that is your, your soulmate. Marriage is about much, much more than I married the right person and that person isn't making me happy and so therefore I want a divorce. Number three, your spouse will change. And Kathy Keller is, uh, Tim Keller's wife, co-authored this book and she makes this point that she's been married to, to five different men and they've all been Tim Keller. In fact, she's probably been married to more versions of Tim Keller. Point is, we all change. Your spouse will change. You have kids in and out of the house, jobs change, friend groups change, all these different changes that happen. Your health changes, your financial uh, situation changes. All of those things change dramatically throughout the course of a marriage. So it is understandable and predictable that your spouse is not going to be the same person that he or she was when you were dating in your 20s. When you're 50, you're gonna be very different people, and that is a good thing. And lastly, number four, spoil your spouse. For the young people out there who aren't married yet, that means don't spoil boyfriends and girlfriends. Don't waste all your best material and some, some girlfriend or some boyfriend that's only just gonna be, uh, you know, somebody, a, a passerby in your life. Save your good stuff for your spouse. And for those of us who have been married for a long time, remember to spoil your spouse. It's not just flowers, but it's saying nice things. It's doing nice things. It's figuring out what is their love language or, or whatever you might be able to do to help spoil your spouse and make them feel special. It's a special relationship. It deserves attention. All right. That's our review of the meaning of marriage. Those are the reasons why we give this to everybody who is getting married to help encourage them. The more good marriages that exist out there in the world, the healthier our society is going to be, the better our children are gonna be. We thoroughly enjoy this book, my, both my wife and I. This has been John Henderson with the Conservative Book Society. Thanks for watching.